Hey there, it's Mazzy, and uh, this is the 6th of July, 2021. So um, this is going to be of a, sh a short video of something that I'm going to be uh, creating over the next, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but um, I recently did a video. It was actually a contest submission for a vinyl community uh, a friend by the name of Steve Carlson, and it was uh, five records that touched me. And... Um, I got a lot of great response in that video. Uh, three of the five were uh, friends that kind of turned me on and gave me albums. And these are friends that I grew up with that I've known for many decades that are no longer with us. And one was a girlfriend giving me a, a, my first copy of the, Beecher, the Beatles Butcher cover. And then lastly, I showed a Diane Krall live record. And um, it was, given to me by my friend Coleman, my, my audiophile friend uh, who I've known for 48 years and we met in a record store, um, who's been very sick and, and, and he passed away this past weekend. And I, I need to get this out for me as much as anything else. I mean, basically just for me. And I'm gonna do a long uh, Memories of a Vinyl Junkies video eventually um, of my friendship with him and some funny times and music. Um, but I picked five records, just I wanted to, I needed to get this out. And I picked five records that my friend Coleman, uh, that we shared together, of music that we shared. And these are not um, uncommon records by any stretch, but these are records going back um, from the 60s into the, um, well, mostly from the 60s actually. And, and before that, in terms of the original versions. Uh, but, I met Coleman when he used to come in, as, when I got my first record store job in 1973, he came into the store and we just, we clicked as friends. And I mean, obviously first we we're just talking about music. You know, these are the days people would hang out at record stores. I'm sure it's happening now, but we were, you know, I think I'm a year older than Coleman. So I was 18, 19 years old, 19 years old, 18, 19, I can't even, get this out as easy as I hope to. And he was, so he was probably 17. And the first band that we we gelled on together and the, the syncopation was there, if that's what you want to call it, is the Jefferson Airplane. And of course we both like Surrealistic Pillow and we love uh, Plus His Pun Little Head, the live album. But we would talk about this band and we were both fortunate enough to, uh, have seen uh, the Jefferson Airplane, you know, fairly early on, even though he was a year younger than me. He would go to the Fillmore. I'd see them in Golden Gate Park. Uh, I first saw the airplane in 1968, but um, this album is considered their most out there album. Uh, end of 1967, this came out the same year as Surrealistic Pillow. And to some, it was a disappointment after D Surrealistic Pillow. It didn't do anywhere as well as that, but it's a really, really uh, cool record if you give it some time. And, and Coleman and I would, would play this record a lot in the store, and I really got into it even more uh, through my friendship with him. Of course, this great song, Martha, which is a beautiful, uh, be kind of a love song ballad on here. And um, also, uh, Two Heads, the great vocals by... Um, Gray slick on here, but there's, it's almost like a little avant-garde-ish in a way, if you can say that. That, that If there's an airplane album that is out there, this would be the one, but um, it's really beautiful psychedelia. So that's one. One of Coleman's favorite bands also is The Who, and we both share this album being our very favorite Who album. In fact, pretty much into the 70s, Coleman likes the these bands, he likes their earlier period uh, a lot better. I mean, he liked Who's Next, but that wasn't really his jam, and I don't think he really liked um, Quadrophini at all. And I am I go hot and cold with Quadrophini, and I've said that on my ranking videos, and that's for another day, another story, another chapter. Uh, but this record, to me, and to both of us, to Coleman and I is a perfect record, and we shared this, we played this album together many times. Uh, I Can See For Miles should have been a number one hit, and it wasn't. But the sound, uh, the Who, the mod sound, the psychedelic pop sound, uh, it the, the mods, the mods. This is all about the mods uh, with the Who, and what a great, great record. And I'll always remember 
uh, listening to this record uh, in the store with uh, Coleman. And um, I share that with him, my love for that record. When I moved to Seattle in 2014, Coleman was the first friend that came to visit for a week in the summer. And every summer since then, up until uh, last year, he would come for about 10 days to two weeks. It was kind of his vacation. He's a musician. I'll get into that more when I do a, a full-on video. He had a band, party band, R&B band, soul band, great band. He led him. He booked him. It was a dream of his. That, in fact, when we met, he was just learning to play guitar, and he wanted to do a soul band, and he did it. He, they played corporate events, parties, clubs all around the Bay Area. Um, they were a, a great, great band called Pride and Joy, and he led them, and they had nine members, you know, two women, two uh, uh, men, vocalists, and then the five-piece uh, band. But this is a, ba uh, a band that he loved that we both, again, share the love for. Again, one of my favorite bands, The Kinks. And especially this album. And Cohen was the one friend uh, that I still have from the record business days that didn't, is into pressings and labels. And when he would come to visit, he'd go through my records and pull them out and go, Hey, Maslow, have you got this uh, steamboat thing? And I, I remember when he first was coming here, or even before, I w really wasn't into pressings and matrix numbers and all that. But he goes, you got to... You know, the steamboat, this, and it's like in pristine shape. I bought this new. I got it, you know, 1960, was it eight it came out? I don't remember right now. So he would love this. I mean, he has a, a lot of the um, the UK kinks, the UK who, who, the UK Beatles stuff. And he's really into the Matrix and things. So he would go through my collection and like kind of tell me what I had. Not that I didn't know the records. I knew musically, but I really wasn't into various pressings. But luckily, I mean, just because of the time I bought these records. But, um, of course, one of the greatest songs of all time, greatest English pop songs is on here. And probably the greatest song Ray Davis ever wrote. And that's Waterloo Sunset is on this album. And this is something else by the Kinks. 67, um, I guess. Yeah, 67, because uh, Village Green is 68. Uh, so I'll always remember my buddy Coleman when I play this record. Now the White Album, I obviously got when it came out. And I have UK copies from the early 70s, and uh, I have a million copies of, <clears throat> multiple copies of Beatle albums. I've been looking for a UK top loader, mono or stereo, but a mono would be great, because that's a rare one. And if you don't know that, in the UK, when the album first came out, top loader is the records come out from the top rather than the side. So you got your, your number here, your, you know, embossed uh, Beatles, a great uh, artwork by um, Richard Hamilton, the modern artist that Paul McCartney brought in to create a cover cover art for the White Album, which I love. I love the minimalist avant-garde, almost like the Fluxus. So Yoko before Yoko, even though Yoko was around at this time. So I think it's kind of, it, there's, there's a certain reasoning uh, for all this. But um, about three years ago, I was at a record fair in Seattle. And I was talking to this woman I know who is a dealer and she sells records that I run into in Seattle a lot in record stores. And she puts up a table at various booths. And she said, are you looking for anything specific? I said, well, I've always wanted, I wanted a white album, the Beatles white album, a top loader. And you can get them online, and usually they go for minimum 70 to 100 bucks on up, depending on condition and everything. And Coleman was at the KUSF, I think, the radio station, the college radio station KUSF record fair in San Francisco at the exact same time. And so I'm telling this woman, Jen, that I'm looking for that record. Out of all the records, I just mentioned that because I don't really keep a written list. I walk away from her table, literally, and I get a, a text. And Coleman says, I found you a White Album Top Loader, $75. $70, I think he said. This is it. He actually um, got it sonically cleaned after the fact. There's a place in San Francisco, a small record store, that for $2.50 a disc will sonically clean your records. There is some noise, but it's it's amazing. They, they originally came in these, of course, 
uh, it's been replaced uh, with polyline sleeves, but it's a top loader. I'd say it's a very good, maybe VG plus VG, but it, it, it was just this kumbaya moment that I was talking to Jen and I said, this is the album I'm looking for. And literally within less than a minute, leaving that table, Coleman texted me and found this for me. And um, we met we when I was in San Francisco that Christmas, like about a month later, I think. And we all uh, went to Original Joe's in North Beach with um, my friend Vernon, who we also lost a year and a half ago, and, and Jazz Shit Brooks. It was our annual pilgrimage to Joe's in North Beach, Original Joe's, right on Washington Square in San Francisco and have a holiday lunch together. So um, we're gonna miss that, we're gonna miss that. I already miss them, uh, that. And lastly, on one of the trips that Coleman came to, and I've always had you know Hank Williams records, and this is a comp that it's not particularly rare, but you don't see a lot. It's a, um, a UK pressing. And I remember we were in a store in Seattle, and I'm forgetting which store it was because we would do a lot of record store uh, things when he was here. And he says, do you have this? I said, I'm not that exact. I have other Hank Williams. I have the MJ white one. He goes, he stuck this in my hand. He goes, you got to buy this. It was probably 20 bucks, $15, $20, double record set. He knows this stuff better than I do. And he's, and unfortunately, I've been trying to, I was trying to get him on my channel, but he just didn't want to uh, do the video stuff. And every once in a while, he would watch a lot of my videos and I'd get some text at like two in the morning or 11 in the morning saying, you know, you said the wrong thing. It's like comments in these videos. That's not the right thing on that Who record or that's not the right. I mean, he wouldn't do it in a bad way, but he just, he knows so much. And it was great. I love that he did it. Um, and he corrected me on that. But this is mono uh, cut and he says this is the best. And it is. Now, obviously, these aren't high fidelity audio file recordings, but they're very great recordings. So if you want a great Hank Williams record. This is 40 Greatest Hits. This came out, I, I believe, I remember we sold this in the record store. And I think this is an early 70s comp. But this is the one to get of all the comps of Hank Williams records. So um, thank you, Coleman, for this. And literally, thank you for putting this record and all these records, uh, you know, metaphorically speaking, in my hand in a lot of ways, that we were able to talk about this. Now, there's a lot of great laughs we had over the years. And when I... Um, when I'm up to it and I'm ready and I kind of think how I want to do it, it's going to be a long video, but it's going to be a Vinyl Junkie, a Memories of a Vinyl Junkie series um, of Coleman and our, you know, 48-year relationship, friendship about music and just laughs we've had, shows we've seen, records, in-store um, shenanigans, and just good times. So I miss you, buddy, and um, I'm going to miss you forever. So... Uh, it's kind of this loss. Interesting enough, up until May, our last text we got from him was May 25th. And almost every morning, Jazz Shit Brooks and Coleman and I would text each other for about an hour on and off, which about coffee, about politics, about uh, the wankers who, who weren't getting vaccine shots, about the, uh, the lies that are going on and this fake news bullshit, and music, and coffee. And we'd send pictures of coffee and records and news articles and things. And that's something we've been doing for a number of years. It's kind of our like little morning uh, virtual get together. And I'm gonna miss that. It's down to Brooks and I for that. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for indulging me and allowing me to just to share these five, these five records that a lot of you probably already know, but I wanted to share the stories ab about them. And I wanna do thank St Steve Carlson yet again for inspiring me to do that video, which allowed me to do this one as a short sort of uh, interlude before I do something else down the line. So um, I'm gonna take a little break. I'll be back in a, a few days, whenever, and uh, we'll see what else comes out. But enjoy the music and uh, really, really appreciate um, your responses, your kindness and your support. Mazzy loves you, really. <laughs>